myself Madhur Kumari. I am handling with the statistics subject. Dear students, you might have heard some of the words, some of the terminologies in the high school level, such as mean, median, mode, etc. Or all these terms are concerned with the statistics. You have already learned about that is mean and median and mode, pi diagram, bar chart, etc. All the terms are concerned with the statistics. Okay. In first view, there are totally 10 chapters are there. In the first view, there are totally 10, 10 chapters are there. The first one is introduction to Statistics. Introduction to statistics and some basic concepts. Second one is organization of data. Third one is classification and tabulation. Fourth one is diagrammatic and graphical representation. Fifth one is analysis of univariate data. Sixth one analysis of bivariate data. Seventh one interpolation and extrapolation. Eighth one Association of attributes, ninth one is theory of probability, and tenth one is last chapter is random variable. Okay, there are totally ten chapters are there. Okay. Here, do you know who is the author of uh, statistics? Here, Sir Ronald A. Fisher is uh, considered as the author of statistics. Sir Ronald A. Fisher is considered as the Father of statistics and the Indian scholar Prashant Chandra Bhanubi is called as a father of Indian statistics. The Indian scholar Prashant Chandra Bhanubi is called as a father of Indian statistics and was the father of Indian statistical institute. Now tell me what is a statistics? What is statistics? Here statistics is a branch of mathematics. It is a branch of mathematics which deals with the collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. It is a branch of mathematics which deals with the collection, that is collecting the data. Collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. Now, we shall discuss about fifth chapter that is analysis of univariate data. No? We shall discuss about fifth chapter that is analysis of univariate data. Then, here the name the univariate indicates mini means what single. Then what is the univariate data? Data with regard to a single variable. Data with regard to a single variable is called a univariate data. Data with regard to a single variable is called univariate data. The study of single variable is called a univariate data. Then what is a variable? The study of single variable is called univariate data. Then what is variable? Here, variable is a quantitative characteristic. It is a quantitative characteristic. What is quantitative characteristic? A, a numerically measurable characteristics is called quantitative characteristics. A numerically measurable, numerically measurable characteristics is said to be quantitative characteristics. Then a, numer a numerically, non-numerically measurable characteristics is said to be qualitative characteristics. Non-numerically measurable characteristics is said to be qualitative characteristics. Non numerically measurable and numerically measurable is quantitative and non numerically measurable is qualitative. Here, quantitative is a quantitative, non numerically measurable is a variable and non numerically measurable, non -numerically measurable is a attribute. That variable, give an example for variable. Here, height, weight, length, etc. Height, weight, length, etc. Variable that is a quantitative characteristics which varies from unit to unit. Quantitative characteristics which varies from unit to unit. Okay. Height increases day by day. And weight is also increases day by day. That is a numerically height is a numerically measurable. Then give an example for attribute. 
that is non immunity measurable that is skin color honesty beauty etc that is a qualitative characteristics which very strong immunity immunity is called as attribute just got it okay here what is a univariate data with regard to a single variable is called a univariate That is the study of single variable. It is called as linear data. Here, generally, frequency distributions are characterized by the following measures. Generally, frequency distributions are characterized by the following measures. Okay, there are totally four measures are there. The first one is measures of central tendency. Second one, measures of dispersion. Third one is measures of skewness, and last one is measures of prognosis. So totally four measures are there. The measures of central tendency, it is also called as average. Second measures of dispersion, it is also called as variation. Third one is measures of skewness, and last one is measures of prognosis. Okay. Now we shall discuss about the first one, that is measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency, that is average. Okay, here central, the central means what? That is midpoint. Central means that mid value, mid point. Then what is the central tendency? What is central tendency? Here, the property of concentration of the observations around a central value is called central tendency. The property of the property of concentrating on the observations. Concentrating on the observations. Around a central value, you have to consider the central value. That is said to be a central tendency. The property of concentration of the observations around a central value is called a central tendency. Okay, here the central value around which there is a concentration, the central value around which there is a concentration is called measures of central. The central value or which there is a concentration, but you can have to concentrate on central value. This called as measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency. For example, okay, give an example for measures of central central tendency. Thus, the frequency distribution of thus the frequency distribution of age of brides, age of brides. The observation may cluster around the value twenty-two years. The age of brides. The observations may cluster around the value twenty-two years. Whereas the age of bridegrooms, the age of bridegrooms, the observations may cluster around the value twenty-six years. Here, here the average age of bride is. 22 years and the average of that room is 26 years. The average of bride bride means madhu magalu, bride groom means madhu maga. Okay, the average of bride is 22 years and the average of bride groom is 26 years. Here 22, here value 22 is a central that is the average. The average is 22. Right, the average is twenty-two. It is said to be a measure of central tendency. And the bride groom is the average is twenty-six years. That is the twenty-six is the central value. That is measure of central tendency. Here we are concentrating on only central value. It is said to be measure of central tendency. Okay. Next one is objectives of the average. Object is of average. Average is object is of that is measure of central tendency. Object is here the first objective is to get a single value to represent the characteristics of the entire mass of the data. To get a single value to represent the characteristics of the entire mass of the data. Here the single value that represent the entire mass of data. It is required a single value that represents the entire mass of data. Here, twenty-two years is a single value. What is twenty-two? That is bride's 
एवरेज इज 22 एंड 26 ब्राइट बॉम्ब्स एवरेज इज बट सिंगल वैल्यू दैट रिप्रेजेंट द एंटायर मास ऑफ ग्लास दैट इज द सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी एंड सेकंड वन टू फैसिलिटेट कंपैरिजन टू फैसिलिटेट कंपैरिजन फैसिलिटेट मींस टू मेक इजीयर हियर वी यूज फॉर कंपैरिजन परपस टू फैसिलिटेट Next point is essentials of good averages. Essentials of good averages. That is the uses of good averages. Uses of that is measures of central tendency. The origins of central tendency. Measures of central tendency. Okay. Here there are only six essentials are there. The first one is it should be easy to understand and simple to calculate. It should be easy to understand and simple to calculate. It is easy as well. And simple to calculate. Second, it should be based on all the observations. It should be based on all the observations. It takes all the values. It takes all the values, all the observations. Third one is, it should be well defined by a mathematical formula. It should be well defined by a mathematical formula. Okay, next fourth one is, it should not be affected by abnormal extreme values. It should not be affected by abnormal extreme values. Fifth one, it should be capable of further algebraic treatment. It should be capable of further algebraic treatment. It should be used for further statistical analysis. And last point is, it should be easily. It should be easily calculated for an open-ended distribution. It should be easily calculated for an Open end distributions. Okay, open end distribution. What is open end distributions? A frequency distribution. A frequency distribution is a frequency distribution that is, for example, if a class involves C I and frequencies. If the class involves the first class interval is not specified, then it is said to be open end, not specified. Okay, here class interval zero to ten. Instead of below 10, that is right, that is below 10. That is right, below 10, that is below 10 is the open end class interval. And 0 to 10, next 10 to 20, 10 to 40, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and 40 and above. 40 and above. Okay, 40 to 50 means nothing but 40 and above. We are writing 40 and above. 40 and above. Here, below 10, above 10, more than 10, less than 10, etc. Simply, Open end instructions. Okay? It should be easily calculated for an open end instructions. Okay? These are the essentials of good calculations. Okay? Next one is types of errors. Types of errors. Types of methods of central analysis. There are totally five types of there. The first one is arithmetic mean, second one is median, third one is four, fourth one is geometric mean, and last one is harmonic mean. There are totally five categories are there. The first arithmetic mean, median, mode, geometric mean, and harmonic mean. Here, the first one is arithmetic mean. Let us discuss with the arithmetic mean. Okay, do you know? What is a arithmetic mean? Here, the most popular and widely used reason for representing data by one value is what lemon called average and statistician called arithmetic mean. Here, average. Here, most popular and widely used reason for representing the data by one value is what lemon called average and statistical statistician called arithmetic mean here average is a or arithmetic average is a arithmetic mean okay here the next types of arithmetic means there are totally two types of arithmetic means are there the one is simple arithmetic mean and another one is a weighted arithmetic mean there are totally two types of arithmetic means are there one is simple arithmetic mean and second is weighted arithmetic mean the first one simple arithmetic mean what is a simple arithmetic what is arithmetic means? Because simple arithmetic means here the 
the sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations to be the sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations is called a simple arithmetic mean or simply arithmetic mean. Arithmetic means of a set of observations is the sum divided by the total number of observations. Yeah, sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations is called a arithmetic. Yeah, it is denoted by x bar. Arithmetic mean is denoted by x bar. Okay, it can be calculated as it can be given by x bar equal to sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations. Sum of the observations divided by the total number of observations. Is that right? Arithmetic. Next one is calculation of arithmetic. Calculation of arithmetic. Here, temporarily, two cases are there. One is ungrouped data and second one is Grouped data. What is ungrouped data? Ungrouped. Okay, ungrouped data is also called as a discrete case. Discrete case. And what is grouped? Grouped means that is continuous. Okay, here what is ungrouped data? In a frequency distribution, the class intervals are not specified. In a frequency distribution, the class intervals are not specified. Then it is said to be again ungrouped data. Class intervals are not specified. Means here the argument x values 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. Okay, 5, 6, 7, 8. With respect to frequencies, we have that is 1, 2, 5, 1, 0. Okay, the class numbers are not specified in this way, ungrouped data. Then what is grouped data? Okay, the, in a frequency description, if the class numbers are specified, in a frequency description, if the class intervals are specified, then it is said to be a group the data. Here, class intervals are specified, class intervals are specified to frequency. Here, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. With respect to frequencies, 2, 4, 6, 10. 2, 4, 6, 10. These are the group the data. In a frequency description, the class intervals are not specified, then it is said to be ungrouped. In a frequency description, if the class intervals are specified, then it is said to be grouped data. Class intervals with respect to frequencies, then it is said to be grouped. Only number of observations with respect to frequency, otherwise observations is said to be ungrouped data. Here, so they are talking two cases. One is ungrouped data. Okay, in another ungrouped data, the first method is direct method. Direct method. Okay. Now how to calculate arithmetic mean? Here, if x1, x2, up to so on, etc. are n observations in the data. x1, x2, up to so on, xn. x, x value is 1, 2, 3, up to so on, n. x1 to xn observations in the data. Then x bar equal to x1 plus x2 plus up to so on, xn. Divided by n, that is nothing but number of observations. Okay, x1 plus x2 plus x1 so x divided by n. It is nothing but it can be written as summation of x, that is sum of x divided by n. Sum of x divided by n is a direct method. Okay, the next one is deviation method. Deviation method. Okay. When the observations at when the observations in the data are large in magnitude, when the observations in the data are large in magnitude, then this then this method signifies the calculation. The number of observations are large, then we have to use deviation method. Okay, here yeah, it can be calculated as
locations of the observation. From u equal to x minus a. From u equal to the direct u value, u equal to x minus a. Okay. Then through that, x bar equal to a plus sum of u by n. Through that, x bar equal to a plus sum of u by n. Sum of u by n. Okay. We know that. We know that u equal to x minus a. We know that u equal to x minus a. I am taking summation on both the sides. Sum of u equal to sum of u equal to sum of x minus sum of u. Sum of u equal to sum of x minus sum of u. Here. Since here sum of one is equal to here. So here divided both the sides by sum of u by n equal to sum of x by n minus. Okay, and a is a constant. Take outside a into sum of one divided sum of one divided by n. Okay, here sum of u by n equal to sum of x by n is equal to what? Sum of x by n divided by x bar minus minus a into sum of one by n a n. Okay, sum of one by n what? N a n divided by n. Here n cancel. Then sum of u by n sum of u by n equal to x bar minus a. Then then minus a taking. That is a plus sum of u by n equal to x bar. So equal to a plus sum of u by n equal to x bar. These are two. Yeah, these are assumed values. So next one. Then how to calculate arithmetic mean? Right? 
is of the initial method. Here x bar equal to a plus sum of f u by capital M. x bar equal to a plus sum of f u by capital M. So here is the assumed value and that is the frequency and here is the deviation. Capital M is the sum of the frequency. Then prove that x bar equal to a plus sum of f u by capital M. We know that we know that u equal to x minus a. We know that u equal to x minus a. Yes, the observation minus assume that u equal to x minus a. Multiply both the sides by f. F u equal to f u equal to x minus a. F u equal to x minus a. Here f u equal to f x minus a. F u equal to f x minus a. Step deviation method means suppose if the midpoint values are given, the midpoint values are given. For example, if the class intervals are given, here x x values, here class intervals with respect to frequency, zero to ten, and frequency is five, ten to fifteen, fifteen to thirty, four to one. Suppose if the class intervals are given, okay, then you want x value, x is the class mid value, mid point value, where x, the common element x, the mid value of the class is equal to 0 to 10 mid value is what? 5. 5, 12.5 and 17.5. Okay, suppose if the class intervals are given, then we have to apply step deviation method. Okay, then we 
it can be given by x bar equal to a plus x bar equal to a plus sum of fu by capital M into c x bar equal to a plus sum of fu by capital M into c where c is a width of the class interval where c is width of the class interval 0 to 10 bit point value c is a bit point value 0 to 10 bit value is 5 10 to 15 bit value is 12.5 here c is 5 ok then then for that x bar equal to a plus f u bar capital M into c we know that here here u equal to x minus a by c here u equal to x minus c in the previous direction u is nothing but x minus c only x minus c because here class numbers are not given only they are given directly x values here they are given class intervals then I have to use u equal to x minus a by c where c is the width of the class then we know that we know that u equal to x minus a by c we know that u equal to x minus a by c cross multiply to c c u equal to x minus a c u equal to x minus a multiply both the sides yeah frequency yeah c u equal to up into x minus a yeah up c u equal to fx minus taking summation on both the sides here c is a constant take outside and a is also constant take outside a into sum of next one divide both the sides by cap small capital M divide both the sides by capital M C into sum of F U by capital M equal to sum of F X by capital M minus A into sum of F sum of F is equal to what? capital M A M Yes, 
sum of x by n. x by equal to sum of x by n. Sum of x. 5 plus 7. 12. 12 per the 29. 29 divided by. So, 29 plus 7 is 40. Here, sum of x is 40. Divided by n. n is the number of observations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here, 5 is a 40. Here, x bar is a 8. x bar is 8. Then, substitute x bar is 8. Here, x minus x bar. x bar is 8. x minus 8. Okay. 5 minus 8, minus 3. 7 minus 8, minus 1. 8 minus 8 is 0. 9 minus 8 is 1. 11 minus 8 is 2. Sum is 0. Minus 3 minus 8 is 0. Minus 1. Cancel. Here, the summation of x minus x bar is always zero. It is the first property. The sum of the deviation, deviation that is sum of x minus x bar is the deviation. The sum of the deviations of set of observations from their arithmetic mean is always zero. The summation of x minus x bar is always zero. Hence, no. Okay. Next one. Second property. The minimal property of mean. Minimal property that is minimum value. Minimal property of mean. Here, the sum of the squares of the deviation from their arithmetic mean is least. Here, x minus x bar is what? Deviation. Summation of x minus x bar is a deviation. Okay. Then, the sum here, let's see that, the, the sum of the squares of the deviation. Here, sum of the squares of the deviation, sum of x minus x bar is whole square. Sum of the squares of the deviations from their arithmetic mean is least. Here, the sum of x minus x bar is plus sum of x minus x bar goes square is always least. The value should be always least means minimum. Yeah? The sum of x minus x bar goes square value is always minimum. Okay, this is the minimal property of a mean. And third one is combined arithmetic mean. Combined arithmetic mean. Here, it can be calculated as x bar is equal to m1 x1 bar plus m2 x2 bar divided by m1 plus m2. If you know the sizes and means of two observations, two series, if you know the sizes and means of two series, then we have to apply combined arithmetic mean. It is given by x plus c equal to n1 x1 plus n2 x2 by n1 plus n2. Suppose if the two sample sizes and two sample means are given, then we have to apply combined arithmetic mean. 1 x1 plus n2 x2 by n1 plus n2. Okay, here n1 and n2 are the two observations. And x1 by x2 are the x2 x1 by x2 bar are the to sample means of the series. Okay, these are the three properties of arithmetic mean. Okay, it is very very important. Write any two properties of arithmetic mean. This is a good mass question. Okay, first one is sum of x minus x bar is always zero. That is the sum of the deviations from the arithmetic mean is always zero. Second one is minimal property of mean. That is sum of x minus x bar plus 2 is least. The sum of the squares of the deviations. The sum of the squares of the deviations from the arithmetic mean is least. Third one is the combined arithmetic mean. Suppose if you know the sizes and means of two series are given, then you have to apply the combined arithmetic mean. That is x bar plus one. x bar is equal to L1 x1 bar plus n2 x2 bar divided by L1 plus n2. Okay. The next concept is merits and demerits of Arithmetic mean. Merits and demerits of progress and merits. Then advantages and progress of arithmetic Then it is simple to understand. The first one is it is easy to and 
इज इट अंडरस्टैंड एंड सिंपल टू कैलकुलेट सेकेंड डी मेरिट इट इज बेस्ड ऑन ऑल द वैल्यूज इट इज बेस्ड ऑन ऑल द वैल्यूज इट टेक्स ऑल द वैल्यूज ओके सपोज एक्स एक्स वैल्यूज फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट ओके here find mean find arithmetic mean okay then we have to apply formula x y equal to sum of x y n here sum of x means i have to take all the values now. then here it is a merit it takes all the values it takes all the values the next it is well defined by mathematical formula next element is it is well defined by mathematical formula where well, using formula na x y equal to sum of x y capital n and x y equal to sum of x y n x y equal to a plus sum of f u by n capital n x y equal to a plus sum of u by n we are using formula then here third property third it is it is very different by mathematical formula next fourth merit is it can be used for Further statistical analysis. You can use for further statistical analysis. The next D merits of arithmetic mean. Drawbacks. D merits of arithmetic mean. Drawbacks of arithmetic mean. What is what are the drawbacks? What are the D merits of arithmetic mean? Okay, it is highly affected by abnormal extreme values. It is highly affected by abnormal extreme values. If the values are large, then it is affected. It is highly affected abnormal extreme values. Okay. And second, D merit. Second one is what? It cannot be used. The data is of the data is of qualitative. Data is of qualitative. This method cannot be used. Qualitative. What is qualitative? That is non-numerically measurable. Non-numerically measurable. Suppose steel, it cannot be calculated. Honesty, it cannot be calculated. Test, it cannot be calculated. The data are of type qualitative. Then this method cannot be applied. It cannot be calculated. And third one, it cannot be obtained graphically. It cannot be obtained. Graphically, arithmetic mean cannot be obtained graphically. Okay, next fourth one. The descriptions have open-ended class intervals. The descriptions have open-ended class intervals. Then this method cannot be calculated. The descriptions have open-ended class intervals. Okay, here class interval with the here frequencies. Okay, suppose class interval starts with that is below ten. 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 and above. The descriptions, the uh, open-ended class numbers, then this method cannot be applied. See below 10 means what? Five. Above, above, 25 above means what? 25 to 30, 25 to 30, 25 to 35. You cannot predict. Okay. Yes, below 10 means that is 0 to 10. Divide 15, 10 to 15. 15 to 20, 20 to 25, 25 above, 25 above means 25 to 30, or 25 to 35, 25 to 40. Okay. Okay. Next, fifth one. Fifth one is what? 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 Weighted arithmetic mean. Next one is weighted arithmetic mean. Weighted arithmetic mean. Weighted arithmetic. What is weight in arithmetic mean? Weight means what? Do you know weight? Here, yeah. the weights are assigned to the various items. 
the ways are assigned to the various items or commodities is called a weight weight arithmetic unit. Okay, suppose we are weight is the atom and atom is x. Here, double one x one. The weights are assigned to the various items, corresponding variables or otherwise corresponding variables. The next is the variable double one x one plus. Double two x two plus double three x three plus up to so on double n x n divided by double one plus double two plus up to so on double n. Okay, the weighted area, the weighted area can be divided by x bar. Weighted area can be divided by x bar. Okay, here double one x one plus double two.